In this video, we will be explaining in detail about the kinetics and kinematics of the thoracic vertebrate. So coming to the structure of the thoracic region, the first and 12 thoracic vertebra are transitional vertebrae and therefore possess the characteristics of your cervical as well as your lumbar vertebrae respectively. The first thoracic vertebrae has a typical cervical shaped body with a transverse diameter nearly twice than the anterior posterior diameter. The spinous process of first thoracic vertebrae is particularly long and prominent. The 12th thoracic vertebrae has a thoracic like superior articular facets that faces posterolaterally. The inferior facets, however, are more lumbar like and have convex surfaces than that face anterolaterally to articulate with the vertical concave posteromedially facing superior facets of the first lumbar vertebrae. Coming to the features of the typical thoracic vertebrae, first one is your body. So the body will be, uh, e uh, body has an equal transverse and anteroposterior diameters, which gives greater stability to the thoracic region. The vertebral bodies are wedge shaped with a posterior height greater than the anterior height, the peak of which occurs at the T7 vertebrae. This anterior wedging produces the normal kyphotic posture of the thoracic spine. Since the vertebral bodies are wedge in shape and which is having a peak wedge shape at the T7 spine and because of this wedging, pro anterior wedging, so this produces a normal kyphotic posture of the thoracic spine. And there is a specific facet that is present in, that is known as your demi facets. Demi facets otherwise known as half facets for articulation with the heads of the ribs are located on the posterolateral corners of the vertebral plateaus. So these demi facets are present in the typical vertebrae. And coming to the pedicles, the pedicles will be facing posteriorly with little to no lateral projection creating a small vertebral canal. And next is about the lamina. The lamina are short, thick and broad in the thoracic region. And psychopophyseal articular process, the superior facets are thin and almost flat and facing posteriorly, superiorly and laterally. So the facets, the superior facet is thin and they are flat as well as they will be facing posteriorly, superiorly and laterally. The exactly opposite will be for your inferior facets. So that will be facing anteriorly, inferiorly and medially. The inferior facets will be facing anteriorly, inferiorly and medially. So the superior facets will be facing posteriorly, superiorly and laterally. And the inferior facet will be facing anteriorly, inferiorly and medially. So the facet is like nearly in the frontal plane. The orientation of the facets changes at T10 or T11 so that the superior facets face posterolaterally and the inferior facets face anterolaterally and they lie close to the sagittal plane. So once the vertebrae is approaching towards the lumbar region, they will be aligned in the sagittal plane. The, and the orientation of the thoracic facets or thoracic region will be almost in the frontal plane. And because of this orientation of the facets, the predominant motion uh, in the occurring in the thoracic region will be your lateral flexion and rotation. And because of the predominant sagittal plane orientation of the facets in the lumbar region, the predominant motion is your flexion and extension. And coming to the transverse process, the transverse process has a thickened ends that supports the paired large oval facets that is the costo tubercular facets for articulation with the tubercle of the ribs. So there are two main facets that is your costo tubercular facets and your demi facets or your half facets that is the unique feature of your thoracic region. So this is about the typical thoracic vertebrae you can able to see here costo tubercular facet and the superior articular facet and the inferior articular facet. The superior articular facet will be facing posteriorly, superiorly and 
laterally and the inferior articular facet will be facing anteriorly inferiorly and medially and there will be some demi facets for the articulations of the ribs so this is the lateral view and this is the intervertebral disc interposed in between two vertebral bodies so forming the interbody joints and this is the superior view of your typical thoracic vertebrae additional differences in the t1 t11 and t12 includes the presence of full costal facets rather than the demi facets given the ribs 1 to 11 and 12 articulate only with their corresponding vertebral bodies so this t1 t11 and t12 will be having full costal facets rather than the demi facets the pedicles in the thoracic region are generally directed more posteriorly and less laterally than those in any other region which creates a small vertebral canal in the thoracic region than in the cervical or lumbar regions since the pedicle is directed posteriorly and less laterally so this this is creating a small vertebral canal so this vertebral canal is particular vertebral canal is less the diameter is less in the thoracic region comparing with your cervical as well as your lumbar regions the lamina are short thick and broad the end plate shows a gradual increase in the transverse and anteroposterior diameters from t1 to t12 coming to the spinous process the spinous process will be sloping inferiorly and from t5 to t8 overlap the spinous process of the adjacent inferior vertebrae so until t5 the spinous process will be sloping inferiorly and even and below that also it will be sloping inferiorly and while it reaches the t5 to t8 vertebrae this will be overlapping the spinous process of the adjacent inferior vertebrae in order to form the excessive kyphotic posture so the spinous process of t11 and t12 are triangular and project horizontally for most of the thoracic spine the tip of the spinous process lie at the level of the caudal vertebrae body coming to the vertebral foramen the vertebral foramen is small and circular the vertebral foramen is small and circular uh, comparing with the cervical and lumbar vertebrae so this vertebral foramen in the thoracic region will be small Coming to the intervertebral disc, the disc, the structure is generally held to be similar to that of disc in the lumbar region with difference only in the size and shape. The thoracic intervertebral discs are thinner than those in the other regions, especially in the upper thoracic segments. Also, the ratio of disc size to the vertebral body size is smallest in the thoracic region, which results in greater stability and less mobility for this region. In the last video, I had uh, told you one thing that if the particular structure or region is having greater stability means the mobility will be compromised or the mobility will be less or in vice versa if the mobility is higher in some particular region means the stability will be less so thoracic region is having one of the greatest stability stability that's why this particular region is having lesser mobility and the intervertebral discs are also somewhat wedge shaped with a posterior height greater than the anterior height which contributes to the thoracic kyphosis since these intervertebral discs as well as the intervertebral bodies bo in, uh, bodies of the vertebra are wedge shaped that contributes to the kyphotic posture of the thoracic region the thoracic intervertebral discs are primary restraints to movements and are considered as the primary stabilizers of the mobile segments Coming to the articulations of the thoracic region, that uh, seems uh, like like uh, same as that of the all all the regions of the spine. There are two uh, joints or two articulations. They are the interbody joints as well as your sigmoidal joints. The interbody joints of the thoracic spine involves flat vertebral surfaces that allow for all translations to occur. Sigmoidal joints are plain synovial joints with fibroadipose meniscoids present. These joints lie approximately 20 degree off the frontal plane, which allows greater range of motion into lateral flexion and rotation and less range of motion into flexion and extension. As I already mentioned, since this orientation of facets in the thoracic region is almost in the frontal plane, the higher, the greater motions will be for your lateral flexion and, uh, and rotation. That means the lateral flexion and rotation movement will be predominating comparing with your flexion and extension. 
the joint capsules are more taut than those of the cervical and lumbar regions which also contributes to the lesser available motions uh, along with the ligaments the joint capsules also will be providing the primary restrictions to the motions that's why one of the reason that this particular region is having less mobility because of the increased stability in this particular thoracic region coming to the ligaments the ligaments associated with the thoracic region are same as that of ligaments which are described earlier except that the ligament of flavum anterior longitudinal ligaments are thicker in the thoracic region than in the cervical region so the ligament of flavum that is a yellow ligament and the anterior longitudinal ligament will be thicker in the thoracic region comparing with the cervical regions apart from this all the ligaments is uh, providing stability to the thoracic region as well coming to the function of the thoracic region the thoracic region is less flexible and more stable than the cervical region because of the limitations imposed by structural elements such as your rib cage spinous process taut sigmoidal joint capsules the ligament of flavum and the dimensions of the disc and the vertebral bodies so all the ligaments that is present over your cervical region except them few uh, specific ligaments all these ligaments will be present over the thoracic region as well plus your facet sigmoidal joint capsules your alignment of your bone and the orientation of the facet as well as the main factor that will be restricting the motion will be your rib cage so because of all these factors the range of motion is limited in this particular thoracic region and because of that the stability is higher in this thoracic region each thoracic vertebra articulates with a set of paired ribs by a way of two joints so this thoracic vertebra articulate with the ribs by two joints that is your costovertebral joints and the costotransverse joints the vertebral components of the costovertebral joints are the demi facets located on the vertebral bodies the vertebral components of the costotransverse joints are the oval facets on the transverse process that is the costotransverse facets and the demi facets coming to the kinematics all motions are possible in the thoracic region but the range of flexion and extension is extremely limited in the upper thoracic region that is t1 to t6 because of the rigidity of the rib cage and because of the facet orientation in the front rib plane since the orientation of upper thoracic region is in the front rib plane so there is some restriction in the motion as well as because of the presence of the rib cage so this all these two factors are mainly responsible for reduction in the range of motion in the upper thoracic region and in the lower part of the thoracic region t9 to t12 this face is like closer to the sagittal plane allowing an increased amount of flexion and extension so in 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 an essence we can say that the thoracic region the main uh, main motion will be your lateral flexion as well as your rotation because of the alignment of the or orientation of facets in the frontal plane lateral flexion and rotation are free in the upper thoracic region range of motion in lateral flexion is always coupled with some axial rotations the amount of accompanying axial rotation decreases in the lower part of the region because of the changes in the orientation of facets at the t10 or t11 the upper part of the thoracic region lateral flexion and rotation are coupled in the same direction while rotation in the lower region may be accompanied by lateral flexion in the opposite direction so in the upper thoracic region the lateral flexion and rotation are coupled to motions and they will be occurring in the they will be happening in the same direction but in the lower thoracic region the rotation will be accompanied with the lateral flexion in the opposite direction so coming to the first kinematics that is your flexion flexion in the thoracic region is limited by tension in the posterior longitudinal ligament the ligamentum flavum the interspinous ligaments and the capsules of the sagmoidal joints extension is limited by the contact of spinous process the laminae the sagmoidal facets and tension in the anterior longitudinal ligament sagmoidal joint capsules and the anterior abdominal muscles lateral flexion is restricted by the impact of sagmoidal facets on the concavity of lateral flexion curve 
and by limitations imposed by the rib cage rotation in the thoracic spine is also limited by the thoracic cage or your rib cage so this is the rotation or kinematics of your rotation of the thoracic vertebral body so in this you can able to see here so there is a rotation happening over the left side so when a vertebra is rotating towards the left side this is accompanied by the distortion of your ribs so there is some differences or changes happening in the ribs that is known as distortion distortion of the associated rib pair the posterior portion on the side to which the vertebral body rotates will be becoming more convex than the earlier and the anterior portion to which there is rotation happening will be becoming flattened so if there is rotation happening towards the left side the posterior part of the rib will be becoming increased in convex convexity and the anterior part of the rib will be becoming flattened the amount of rotation that is possible depends on the ability of the ribs to undergo the dis distortion and the amount of motions available in the costo transverse and the costo vertebral joints so the amount of distortion is dependent on the factors like the amount of motions in the costo transverse as well as your costo vertebral bodies and because of the aging during aging and all the amount of distortion will be getting less so this is the combined torco lumbar flexion so this is the kinematics of your torco lumbar flexion so in this i will be explaining about the thoracic part or thoracic flexion only and the lumbar flexion will be explained in detail in the next video so during flexion you can able to see similar what are the kinematics present in the cervical spine itself all the ligaments over your posterior region will be preventing or will be getting stretch and this stretch will prevent the excessive motion or your hyperflexion and your anterior annulus fibrosis will be getting compressed and bulging anteriorly and the posterior annulus fibrosis will be getting stretch and thereby preventing the excessive motions as well as during flexion there will be sliding of one vertebra over the another vertebra happening in the thoracic region so this is the torco lumbar flexion in total you can able to see 85 degrees of thoracic torco lumbar flexion in which 50 degree will be predominated by your lumbar region 50 degrees of flexion will be by your thoracic uh, lumbar region and remaining 35 degrees so 50 plus 35 degrees will be the combined 85 degrees so 35 degrees of thoracic flexion along with 50 degrees of lumbar flexion so as you know thoracic the motions of the flexion extension motion in the thoracic spine will be less compared to the lumbar region because of the orientation of faces in the frontal plane so because of the orientation of faces in the frontal plane the predominant motions in the thoracic spine will be your lateral flexion along with your rotation so next is the kinematics of your torco lumbar extension so the combined torco lumbar extension will be 35 degrees in which there will be 15 degrees of extension happening in the lumbar spine and remaining 20 degrees to, uh, happening in the thoracic spine so what are the stretches the main ligament or, or the only ligament that will be restricting the motions or hyper extension will be your anterior longitudinal longitudinal ligament that is the main reason this anterior longitudinal ligament will be twice as strong as the, that of the posterior longitudinal ligament as well as your other posterior ligaments all the posterior ligaments will be getting slack during extension motions and the thoracic spinous process will be pre preventing the excessive hyper extension by creating a bony block the spinous of pan this spinous process will be coming near near to the below spinous process and 
there is an approximation of spinous process happening in this particular extension motions. That is one of the bony restrictions or bony block that prevents the hyperextension of the thoracic spine during the thoracic extension. And the anterior annulus fibrosis will be getting stretched and the posterior annulus fibrosis will be getting compressed and bulging posteriorly. So these are the factors or what are the changes occurs during the thoracolumbar extension, thoracic extension. So coming to the axial rotation, thoracolumbar axial rotation, in which there is 40 degrees of thoracolumbar axial rotation happening and the majority of rotation will be happening in the thoracic spine. Since I already told the orientation of phases is in the frontal plane, the predominant motion in the thoracic spine will be your lateral flexion along with your rotation. So 5 degrees of motion is only happening in the lumbar region. The remaining 35 degrees, the majority of rotation will be happening in the thoracic spine. So during thoracic uh, spine, spinal extension, thoracic thoracolumbar axial rotation, what are the changes or what are the factors that occurring is there is a sliding of vertebra. So superior vertebra will be sliding over the inferior vertebra as well as there will be some distortion of the ribs happening. So if, if the person is rotating towards the left side, so the left side uh, by inferior or the posterior aspect of the ribs will be increased in con convexity and the anterior ribs will be getting flattened. So this is the rib distortion along with the happening along with the rotation of the thoracic vertebrae. And coming to the thoracolumbar lateral flexion, in thoracic lateral flexion, you can see here that the combined thoracolumbar lateral flexion will be 45 degree, in which 25 degree will be happening in the thoracic spine and 20 degree will be happening in the lumbar spine. So in this, you can able to see the majority or predominant motion uh, of this lateral flexion will be happening in the thoracic spine because of the orientation of faces in the frontal plane. So during this motion, uh, you can able to see if the person is uh, lateral flexion towards the right side, you can see the in superior face side will be sliding inferiorly on the inferior face side on the same side or the area of concavity. And in the arc of convexity, that is the opposite side, the left side superior facet will be sl sliding superiorly over the inferior facet. So this is the kinematics of the thoracolumbar lateral flexion happening in the thoracic anterior lumbar spine. So coming to the kinetics, the thoracic region is subjected to increased compression forces in the in comparison with the cervical region because of the greater amount of body weight that needs to be supported and the region's kyphotic shape. The line of gravity falls anterior to the thoracic spine. This produces a flexion moment on the thoracic spine that is contracted by the posterior ligaments and the spinal extensors. The greatest flexion moment is at, at the peak of kyphosis as a result of increased moment arm of the line of gravity. By this, we are concluding about the kinetics and kinematics of the thoracic spine. In the next video, we will be explaining in detail about the kinetics and kinematics of the Lempa Spine. Please do subscribe and share this channel. Thank you.